Welcome to my latest case, Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon. To start, choose Junior or Senior Detective. If you're new to adventure games or need some help, click on Tutorial. Dear Hannah, here I am at the railroad station along with a handful of other detectives about to board a train bound for who knows where. The only person who knows where we're going is Lori Gerard. That's the young woman who invited everyone. Actually, she didn't really invite me. She invited Frank and Joe Hardy, and they invited me. And I've always wanted to join forces with the Hardy boys. I just hope this doesn't turn out to be another one of Lori's silly attempts to grab publicity. Some people can be a little too rich and a little too famous for their own good. Wish me luck. Love, Nancy. Well, people, now that our little orientation tour is over, let's get started. Okay, I, again, am Lori Gerard, and the first thing I want to do is thank you all for coming. John Gray, I am so thrilled that you're taking time out from that TV show of yours to do some ghost hunting here with us. I mean, Ghost Chasers is like the best cable show ever. And Charlena Purcell. I cannot tell you how much I adore those romance novels you write. Your characters just seem so real. And all that stuff you know about the Old West, you are just awesome. And Tino Balducci, only the most famous police detective in the country. And then there's Frank and Joe Hardy. They're amateur detectives. My dad and their dad are old friends. And you must be the other amateur detective, their friend, Natalie? Nancy. Nancy Drew? Whatever. All right. I'll bet you're wondering where we're going. Well, we're going to Copper Gorge, Colorado. Why? To solve the mystery of what happened to Jake Hurley, the man who originally owned this train. Because see, one day in 1903, his train, this train, was found in a place called Blue Moon Canyon, which was out in the middle of the Nevada desert. Only the engineer was on board, and he was dead. As for Jake Hurley, he had disappeared from the face of the earth. Oh, and two more things. Before he disappeared, Jake was rumored to have found the richest gold mine in the world. And the train he owned, this train, his wife Camille died on it while they were going to the gold fields. It was rumored to be haunted. <laughs> She's gone. Oh my gosh. What in the world? What the... Hey, what's going on? People should never go tampering with things they don't understand. Oh, brother. It's okay. Everybody just stay calm. No need to panic. I'll get to the bottom of this. Well, Nancy, you're up on all that social etiquette stuff. What are you supposed to do when your hostess vanishes into thin air? If I don't seem concerned, it's because I'm not. Lori Gerard is a young woman whose only goal in life is to be famous. She craves attention and habitually uses her father's considerable wealth to get it. So you think her disappearing like that is just some kind of publicity stunt? I just think she couldn't resist showing off in front of all of us minor celebrities. What was your name again? Nancy Drew. You and I have actually met. Sort of. I called you not too long ago when I was at Shadow Ranch. You gave me some information about Dirk Valentine. Ah, Nancy Drew. You don't remember me, do you? No. Have you ever met Lori's other guests before? Psst, Nancy. Come here. Uh, excuse me for a second. Is this Jake and his wife? Yes. From what I've read, Camille loved to sing and dance, even in death, apparently. Jake reportedly told people that after she died, he would sometimes see strange glowing lights outside the windows at night, bobbing gracefully alongside the train as if dancing with it. He said he found the sight very comforting. I suspect normal people would have found it terrifying. Hey, Nance. Where have you two been? I followed Tino Balducci. And I went after John Gray. He went straight to the room in the car that used to be Camille's and didn't come out again. I could hear all these weird noises coming from inside. Did you talk to him? I was just about to go in, but the next thing I know, Joe's got my arm in a vice grip and is dragging me back here, babbling about how Balducci's our guy. 
He found something on the floor right where Lori was standing when the train went dark. I saw him pick it up and put it in his pocket. Then he left. Did you ask him about it? When I tried to talk to him, he just kind of brushed me aside and said something snotty like, I'm on the job here, Junior, so just go back to the playground and stay out of the way. In case you two hadn't noticed, we're not getting a lot of respect around here. Can't we at least tell Balducci that we do stuff for ATAC? You know the rules. ATAC? American teens against crime. We do a lot of undercover work for them. Wonder Cop's probably never even been undercover. Joe, let it go. What'd Charlena have to say? She thinks Lori is faking this whole disappearance thing. She's not the only one. How can you say that? You heard Lori scream. Anybody can scream, Joe. Especially girls whose fathers have given them acting lessons along with everything else they've ever wanted. What about you, Nancy? What do you think? I kind of agree with Frank. You've got to be kidding. Do you think maybe one of Lori's other guests is in on her disappearance? It's certainly possible. From the way she talked, it didn't sound like she knew any of them. Maybe that's what she wanted us to think. Or maybe that's what one of them wanted her to think. Well, whether Lori disappeared by force or by choice, what we've got to do now is find her. Absolutely. Has anyone talked to the engineer? Not that I know of. Then I'm going to head up front and tell him what's happened. Maybe he knows something we don't. Good idea. In the meantime, we'll take another look around in here. Great. Catch you later. Engineer, what do you want? Hello, I'm one of the passengers, and I just thought you should know that Lori Gerard has disappeared. So? I just thought you might want to call the police or something. Hey, all I know is I take orders from Miss Gerard, okay? Right now my orders are to get this train to Copper Gorge non-stop. And until Miss Gerard tells me otherwise, that's what I'm gonna do. But Lori may not even be on the train anymore. Look, Miss Gerard may not be a rocket scientist or anything, but even she knows better than to jump off a moving train. But- Now if you'll excuse me, I got me a train to run. Looks like some sort of steam valve. A square and a duck. It looks like there's something behind this painting, but I can't seem to move it. Sadie Crawford. Yes? I hope I'm not disturbing you. You are, but I'm quite used to disturbances. You see, I'm writing my next book. I'm on a deadline, so until I write those two most wonderful of all three-letter words, the end, everywhere I go, my laptop goes, and every chance I get, I write. What else do you know about Jake Hurley? You know, the man who originally owned this train? Wealthy, imaginative, adventurous, stubborn, egocentric, and most importantly, he was smitten at the age of 35 by a young French woman named Camille Voulet, who died about a year after they were married. Where was he from? East Coast. Philadelphia, I think. His parents were British aristocrats. Sometime in the 1870s, he decided to seek his fortune out west, so he had this train custom-built so that he, and some years later his wife, could traverse the mountains and plains in relative comfort. Where did he meet Camille? I don't know that. The circumstances surrounding her passing are a bit of a mystery too. All anyone knows for sure is that years after Camille's death, he showed up in Denver with a pouch full of gold nuggets and semi-precious stones, which he used to purchase mining supplies. He refused to say how he'd come by them, which of course led to speculation that he had found a fantastically rich vein somewhere. Although to this day, its existence remains unsubstantiated, and its location, quite unknown. Why do you think Lori invited you on this trip? No doubt because I'm such an authority on life in the Old West, and because I'm so good at using old information to unearth new information. My knack for research is... well, it's a gift. I should get going. All right then. Pretty. Looks like some kind of gemstone. This must have been the sleeping car.
Left pickaxe and lamp with Buell for safekeeping. To open what's closed, lead is the key. Or is it lead is the key? Hello? Hi, Bess. George, get over here. It's Nancy. It's about time you called. What's up? What's up? You're the one who's on the train with a bunch of famous people. You tell us. This is torture, Nancy. I'm dying of curiosity here. Bess, just calm down. Oh, like you're not just as curious as I am. She's been begging me to call you ever since she got here. Only because you've been driving me crazy. I'm supposed to be helping her paint her room, but every other brush stroke, she's like, where do you think she is now? How do you think the Hardy Boys are doing? Why do you think she hasn't called? What do you think Lori Gerard is wearing? Oh, George, that is so not true. I couldn't care less what Lori Gerard is wearing. So come on, Nancy. You're on a train full of famous people bound for who knows where. So dish already, would ya? Bess, calm down. Look what you did. You got paint in my hair. I'm sorry. You know, actually, that looks kind of cool. Nice try, Bess. No, really. You're just saying that because you're afraid I'll bail and you'll wind up having to paint this dump all by yourself. George, I kid you not. You should seriously think about doing some major highlights in that color. What color is it? Adobe beige. Nice try, Bess. What's going on, Nan? Our hostess has disappeared. What do you mean, disappeared? I mean, the train went into a tunnel, everything went dark, and when the train came out of the tunnel, no lorry. She just disappeared. Publicity stunt. My thoughts exactly. Remember the time she was allegedly kidnapped from her Vegas hotel room? Yeah, the guy across the hall just happened to have a camera and got it all on tape. It made the evening news in practically every city in the country. And then there was her daring escape the next morning. Only it turns out she faked the whole thing. Of course, she claims her ex-boyfriend faked it to get back at her. She thought she was really being kidnapped. Like anybody believes that. Sounds to me like somebody has been spending a lot of time reading the tabloids. George has. Very funny. So what else is going on? Before she disappeared, Lori told us that the purpose of this train trip is to find out what happened to Jake Hurley, the train's original owner. Was he murdered or something? No one knows. He was married to a woman named Camille, but she died, and he eventually vanished while mining for gold. His train was found abandoned in Blue Moon Canyon, Nevada, with no one on board but his dead engineer. Whoa, spooky. Have any theories? Not yet, but the train is also rumored to be haunted by his dead wife. Hmm. So first Hurley's wife dies, then Hurley vanishes, then the engineer dies, then Lori vanishes. A pattern, maybe? Best. Do us all a favor and leave the detective work to Nancy, okay? Has either of you been to Copper Gorge, Colorado? Never heard of the place. Why? Well, that's where the train I'm on is headed. Apparently Jake Hurley buried his wife Camille there after she died on the train. She died on the train? Ew, creepy. Jake used to see strange lights at night bobbing alongside the train and thought it was Camille dancing. Super creepy. Yeah, I just got goosebumps. Which is hard when you're practically covered in paint. Catch you later. Okay. Well, George, back to work. This is the Drew residence. Please leave a message at the beep. It's Nancy. Just calling to say hi. You don't need to call me back. Bye. I need four numbers to unlock this, and there's, what, 10,000 possible combinations? <laughs> uh, guessing could take me a while. Hi, you're that Nancy person. How you doing? John Gray. It's a pleasure to meet you. I've seen your TV show. Then I don't have to explain what I'm doing. Oh, heck no. Why, you're measuring the who's he, what's with your trusty gizmometrometer thing. 
Right now, I'm taking time-lapse electromagnetic readings and recording background noise. This was Camille's private car. If she had something to do with Lori's disappearance, analyzing these readings may give me a clue as to Lori's whereabouts. Are you saying that Camille's ghost kidnapped Lori? What to most people are ghosts are actually temporary distortions and local electromagnetic fields caused by the presence of residual psychic energy generated by the person or persons who frequented that particular locale. That's my working theory, at least. That's very interesting. It's all very scientific. But the fact is, Lori's missing, and I for one am doing everything in my power to find her. The vibes I'm getting make me think she could be in serious trouble. Charlena Purcell thinks Lori is just playing some kind of joke on us. Charlena Purcell writes romance novels. End of comment. What do you think of Tino Balducci? I kind of feel sorry for the guy. After catching those bank robbers, he can't just be a good cop anymore. He's got to be a great cop. So I have to perform under that kind of pressure. Is Lori a friend of yours? First time I met her was when I boarded this train with all the rest of you. I knew her by reputation, of course. Like everyone else who reads the tabloids. It doesn't appear that anyone aboard this train is her friend. Maybe she planned it that way. You mean so we'd concentrate all our efforts on finding Jake Hurley? Possible, although she really doesn't strike me as being the planning type. Thanks for the chat. Goodbye. The Little Book of Samplers. This looks like some sort of game. Wipe out. What's in here? Teddy Eberhardt. I need some music. Don't do that, please! Those microphones I set up over there are very sensitive. You just about took out my eardrums. You can play that thing when I'm done. I'll let you know when that is, all right? Okay. Sickly Sarah caught a germ so new, it made one of her pretty green eyes turn blue. Looks like Camille was teaching herself how to play the piano. Thomasina O'Neill. I wonder what's under here, and what the deal is with those weird-looking bolts. Looks like some kind of sewing sampler. I wonder if there's a relationship between those symbols and those numbers. Hey, Nancy, right? That's right, Nancy Drew. Amateur detective, huh? Never thought about becoming a real detective? You know, like me? You mean, become a police detective? No, I never have. It's a great job, you know. I love it. You, uh, heard about those bank robberies I solved, right? Yes, I sure did. Baffling case. Two-man team at 17 banks in three states in five days? FBI had no idea who the perps were. But after forcing their vehicle to a stop, confronting them, despite the fact that they were armed and giving chase, I single-handedly made the collar. I heard they stopped because you accidentally rear-ended them. You heard wrong. You see, Nancy, when somebody does something really remarkable in this country, the first thing everybody else does is try to tear them down. Reporters, late-night comedians, even some of my fellow officers. All have been spreading vicious lies about me. Why? 
and because they've never done anything remarkable in their sorry little lives, and they're jealous. Anyway, you should look around in here. Lots of interesting stuff. Well, this was Jake's private car, you know. I understand that you found something on the floor in the dining car. Yeah, at uh, first I thought it was an old coin, but it uh, turned out to be some kind of slug. Where do you think it came from? Probably been lying there for a hundred years. May have served a purpose back then, but now, worthless. May I see it? Sure. In fact, here, keep it. Wear it around your neck or something. That way, when people ask you where you got it, you can tell them Tino Balducci gave it to you. THE Tino Balducci. Oh, thank you. What else can I do for you? So, what do you think happened to Lori? She could have been kidnapped, she could have been tossed off the train, she could be hiding from us. But I obviously won't know which until I've gathered all the facts. When do you think that will be? I'll know the facts when I know the facts. The truth can't be rushed, you know. Have you had a chance to talk to Charlena Purcell? Now why would I want to do a thing like that? You don't like her? I can't stand those sappy books she writes. And seeing as I said as much during an interview on national TV once, it's a pretty safe bet she doesn't like me. Have you talked to John Gray? <laughs> the ghost guy? Total quack. Only reason I'd talk to him would be to arrest him for fraud. Thanks for your help. Don't mention it. Wonder what Jake used this for. A meal with Hager Anderson and Chantilly Hildegard. Looks like an old-fashioned cigar box. Wonder why it's locked. Another gemstone. Eliza Sandberger. There, all done. An old scale. Strange. It seems to be built into the wall. Those symbols look like the ones I saw in that sampler. It's locked. That square and that duck look very familiar. Silver. What do all those colors have to do with silver? Looks like to make this thing, whatever it is, I'm going to need a spyglass, a pickaxe, and a lamp. Citrine, amethyst, zircon... Those are all gemstones, I think. Thank <laughs> you. 
what's supposed to go here. Looks like I need to enter eight letters into this thing. The question is, which eight letters? the one to find me. No offense, uh, Nadine? Nancy. Nancy Drew. Well, as you can see, I wasn't really spirited away by ghosts or anything. That bookshelf in the dining car, you step on this thing in the floor in there, and it slides open. I practiced disappearing for weeks. So it was just all for show? Well, not entirely. See, here's the deal. My dad wound up with this train when he bought out Noram shipping. They'd been storing it in this old warehouse outside St. Louis for so long that everybody had just forgotten about it. Anyway, after like mass begging on my part, dad had the train restored to working condition and got me an engineer and track permits and all that other stuff until finally, here we are, on our way to find out what happened to Jake Hurley. Uh, I think you were going to explain why you kidnapped yourself. Oh, right. Well, see, I was one of the first people in like a hundred years to set foot on this train, okay? Everything was just the way it was when Jake disappeared. Except, I also found this. It's a letter that Jake wrote in 1901 to his niece back east. He was real paranoid about claim jumpers, which is why he never told anyone where his mine was. But he was also afraid something would happen to him and no one would ever know where it was. So he wrote this letter to his only living relative, Ruth Kensington. Here, take it. You want me to have it? Why? Because you found me. See, in that letter, Jake tells Ruth that everything she needs to figure out where his mine is, is on this train. He also warns her that his wife's spirit is on the train too, which kind of creeps me out. But the thing is, to find Jake's lost mine, we need the train. How do you know this Ruth person didn't find the mine decades ago? Mostly because I found that letter in the wastebasket. It was like she'd gotten so ticked off trying to follow her nutty uncle's clues that she finally said to heck with the whole thing. So you want me to try to figure out where the mine is? Uh-huh. As for the other people on board, if you want to show them that letter, go ahead. It's totally up to you. We're going to Copper Gorge because that's where Jake buried Camille, so I figured his mine might be somewhere around there too. But if you think we need to go somewhere else, you just let me know and I'll have the engineer take us there. How come you didn't try to find the mine yourself? Maybe I did. Or maybe I just thought letting other people try to find it would be a good excuse to throw a party. I like parties. How well do you know your guests? Well, I don't know you or those Harvey guys at all. Hardy. Frank and Joe Hardy. Whatever. I didn't know John Gray before this either, but I love his show. And I figured he'd jump at the chance to investigate an honest-to-goodness haunted train. And now that someone has finally found me, I can finally go meet him for real. What about Tino Balducci? I met Tino right after he got famous for solving those robberies. Inviting him here for this was a no-brainer. I mean, what an awesome detective. And those piercing eyes of his? You just know his mind's in there going 90 miles an hour. How well do you know Charlena Purcell? I just know her from her books, which are so good. In fact, I just started reading her latest one, The Moon Tells No Lies. See, what I'd really, really like to do is write romance novels. Everybody who knows me says I'd be really good at it. In fact, a while back, I sent Charlena some ideas, you know, just to see what she thought. And? She hated them. Guess I'd better get to work. I'll be waiting. The 3rd of November, 1901, from somewhere in Colorado. Dear Ruth, I know that we've never met, but now that your father, my estranged brother, is gone, 
You are my only living relative. I am writing to you to tell you about my mind before I, too, depart this earth, and its location is lost forever. I cannot tell you outright where it is, lest this epistle fall into the wrong hands, but with the information which follows, and with my train, which shall be yours upon my death, I promise that you'll be able to find it. First, you will need a map. To obtain it, know that my travels have taken me all over this great country, to towns which can be difficult to find, to Calico, Silverado, and Central City, to Dodge City, Virginia City, and Tombstone. To locate the mine on the map, you'll need my projector. When it comes to placing the stones, you'll need to ask someone who holds a warm place in my heart. I have stored his name accordingly. But to retrieve his name, you'll have to give the dolls an order. This will require looking inside Camille's dancing shoes for the name of their maker and wearing the shoes as you perform her favorite step on the dance floor. As for my beloved Camille, she has four words for you, words which, when translated into numbers and used in combination, will help power my projector. But alas, she's taken them with her to her grave. So go to Copper Gorge, Colorado and pay your respects and let some of her goodness rub off on you. I promised Camille that this train would always be her home. In return, she promised to never leave, and indeed she never has. People say I'm crazy, but I've seen her, and heard her, and feel her presence on the train even today, 20 years after her untimely death. So above all else, my dear niece, let nothing happen to my train. It holds wonderful things. Kindest regards, Jake Hurley. Looks like a dance floor, maybe? Darn, the name of the shoes is so faded I can't tell what it is. Hmm, maybe Bess and George can help me figure out who made them. Hi, Bess. Hey, what's going on? Lori gave me a letter that Jake Hurley wrote to his niece, telling her how to find his gold mine. If Lori knows where the mine is, why doesn't she just make a beeline for it? Because apparently Jake was too paranoid to tell his niece outright where it was, so he filled the letter with all these weird, obscure clues. I don't think Lori could make heads or tails of them. I know I barely can. Sounds like when he lost his wife, Jake may have lost a few marbles as well. The name of the company that made Jake's wife's dancing shoes is too faded to read. But to find Jake's mine, I need to know what it is. Hey, I know what you can do. Take a picture of him with your cell phone, then send it to us, and we'll check them out for you. But I thought you guys had to paint Bess's room. Boring. Besides, we're going to have to take a break soon because we're almost out of paint. Probably because Bess has gotten more on me than she has on the walls. Anyway... Send us a picture of the shoes via cell phone as soon as you can. Actually, I already sent you a picture of the shoes. Well then, hey, we're on it. Oh, you guys are the greatest. I know. Need anything else? I get the definite feeling Lori Gerard has a thing for Tino Balducci. I saw him on TV once. He is very cute. Lori thinks he's the world's greatest detective. And you don't? Let's just say I'm glad he doesn't work for our police department. I think the only reason he's famous is because he looks good on camera. Well, I think you two are being way too hard on him. Just because he's good looking doesn't mean he can't also be smart. In fact, maybe Balducci tries to look incompetent on purpose. You know, to give the bad guys a false sense of security so it's easier to catch them. Ever think of that? No, Bess, I never did. Well, there you go. Talk to you soon. Remember, when in doubt, call. I bet I know what this is for.
Guess I'm done. Strange. All that's left is a jumble of letters. That must be the projector Jake mentioned in his letter to Ruth. Mine must be somewhere on this map, but where? Well, it's the little lady detective. What do you need? I found Lori. She was hiding in the caboose. Oh, yeah? She disappeared because she wanted to see who'd find her first, which is why she left that clue behind. That slug? Uh, I mean, I knew that slug was a clue. That's why I gave it to you. I mean, I could have found Lori no sweat. But I thought, hey, why not give somebody else a shot? And you came through. Nice job. Thank you. But look, from now on, if you come across anything that may have something to do with Jake hurling his mind, let me know, okay? Just so I can, you know, give you advice, help you sort things out. After all, the opportunity to work side by side with a world famous police detective doesn't come along every day, you know. How did you and Lori meet? We met at a party in New York. Nice girl. Not a lot upstairs, but nice girl. She seems to have a thing for your eyes. Yeah, she always told me they were. I mean, she told me once that she thought they were very, uh, you know, brown. What do you think happened to Jake Hurley? He probably died trying to work that mine of his all by himself. But I'll let you in on a secret. I'm onto something that could crack this case wide open. What did you find? Sorry, can't go into detail. Let's just say that thanks to yours truly, what happened to Jake Hurley won't be a mystery much longer. It's been great talking to you. Don't mention it. Wonder what Jake used this for. That could be one of the gems I need. Maybe Tino will let me take a closer look. What's up? I found Lori safe and sound in the caboose, so I guess those vibes you got about her being in serious trouble were wrong. Strange. My vibes are never wrong. What's even stranger is, I'm still getting them. So maybe they're not about Lori. Maybe they're about you. Me? I'm not in any trouble. Trust me. Either you or Lori is, or soon will be, in big trouble. Could you be more specific? Unfortunately, no. Well, I'll catch you later. Pleasure talking to you. That tool I saw in the caboose. I bet that's what you use to unscrew these bolts. More pipes to connect. Here we go. What's up? 
I saw a bunch of weird glowing lights outside the window of the sleeping car. Really? Actually, I'm not surprised. Charlena said Jake Hurley used to see them too, only he attributed them to his dead wife, Camille. They're probably some form of piezoelectricity. See, my guess is quartz crystals in the ground are being compressed as the train passes over them, and the resulting voltage, called piezoelectricity, is manifesting itself as glowing lights, probably because of some quirk in the train's shape or in the composition of the metals used in its construction. It was custom-built, remember. So it's a natural phenomenon, not a ghostly one? Take it from me. Old Mother Nature was capable of some pretty scary stuff. Thanks for the chat. Pleasure talking to you. Yes? I found Lori. She's in the caboose. You were right. She disappeared because she wanted to see which of us would find her first. And you won. Congratulations. The others on the train, John Gray and that police detective, do you know them very well? I don't know them at all. Needless to say, I don't watch television, so I've never even seen Mr. Gray before. Although I do know that his profession, if you can call it that, is rife with crackpots. As for Mr. Balducci, from what I've read, his success in solving those robberies was less a matter of talent and more a matter of being in the right place at precisely the right time. In other words, you don't think he deserves all the attention he's getting? No. You and those two Boy Scouts you're with would make better detectives. Is that all, dear? Did you know that Laurie wants to be a romance novelist? <sighs> Doesn't everyone. Do you think she could do it? No. Could we please talk about something a little more pleasant? I'll touch bases with you later. My publisher thanks you. Hey, Nancy. What's with the Cheshire Cat grin? You found Lori. Yep. She's holed up in the caboose. And as a reward for finding her, she let me have this. It's a letter from Jake to his niece in which he leaves clues telling her how to find his mine. Only the clues are extremely obtuse. You found Lori. You got the letter with all the clues. Guess you don't need us anymore. Oh, Joe, quit pouting. Want any help? Are you kidding? You bet I do. Now you're talking. Balducci wants me to share everything I find out about Jake Hurley with him. I'll bet he does. He just doesn't want you to show him up again. Yeah, he wants you to do all the legwork so at the last minute, BAM! He can swoop in and grab all the credit. I wouldn't tell him a thing, Nance. Unless it's to get lost. It stands to reason that the only person other than Jake who had to have known the location of Jake's mine was the engineer on Jake's train. Very true. Not necessarily. Jake might not have told him the exact location. Maybe he just had him drop him off somewhere nearby. Well, still, we'd be way ahead of the game if we knew where that drop-off point was. If the engineer had any surviving relatives, we may be in luck. The guy died more than a hundred years ago. How are we supposed to find out his name? Maybe Charlena What's-Her-Face could tell us how to go about it. Good idea, Frank. I'll ask her. I found a diagram for some kind of contraption that Jake designed, but to operate it you need his pickaxe and some kind of lamp or lantern, which it looks like he gave to somebody named Buell. Buell? Joe, show her! Show her what? That old picture we found! Uh... Okay. We found this on the bookshelf. See? Buell's Supplies and Pawn Shop. That's gotta be the same Buell Jake gave his axe and lantern to. Yeah, a hundred years ago. And the guy was a pawnbroker, Frank. The stuff's probably long gone. Or maybe it's still somewhere in Copper Gorge. Well, that's where we're headed, so let's just hope for the best. Right. See you later. You know where to find us. So, Lori pushed that button, slid the shelves open further, squeezed through, and disappeared. Very clever. More questions? How would I go about finding out the name of Jake's train engineer? If you're smart, you'd ask me. And because my work is going surprisingly well, during my next break, I'll log on to my archives at home and see what I can turn up. That'd be great, thank you. Whoever invented the cellular modem, that's whom you should thank, dear. 
I should get going. My publisher thanks you. Me again. Just checking to see whether you were able to find out the name of those dancing shoes yet. Your wish is our command, but hang on to your hat. The name is a real mouthful. The shoes were made by Chaussette Chateauyant. C-H-A-U-S-S-E-T-T-E-S. C-H-A-T-O-Y-A-N-T-E-S. That's French for shimmering socks. Apparently, if you were into dancing in the 1870s, that was the company to get your shoes from. Chaussette Chateauyant. Got it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for letting us help. Tino Balducci definitely has a thing for Lori Gerard. So there's some kind of mutual attraction thing going on between them? Something's going on between them. I'm not really sure what. Well, find out. I mean, that's a mystery worth pursuing. To heck with this Jake Hurley stuff. You'd give up the possibility of finding gold for gossip, Bess? For gossip this good? Oh, yeah. Catch you later. Remember, when in doubt, call. Looks like a pattern for some kind of dance step. Maybe I'd better keep this. Wilson Carbide and Acetylene Works. Always your friend, Thomas Wilson. J.H. For Jake Hurley, obviously. Must be Jake's insignia. must have thrown the emergency brake. The question is, did somebody throw the brake or something? Oh, Joe, now you sound like Lori. Hey, I was the first one on the scene and I saw no one. Who was the next person on the scene? John Gray. Then Balducci came bursting through one door while Frank and the engineer came through the other. Boy, was that guy ticked. He said the train could have derailed. He reset the brake, muttered a few choice words, then headed back to the engine just as you and Lori showed up. Everybody was there except Charlena. I don't think she left her laptop the whole time. Do you think she could have thrown the brake and snuck back to her laptop without your seeing her? Not likely, but possible, I guess. The question is, why? What did she or anybody else stand to gain by stopping the train? Answer? Nothing. Which is why I think we should at least consider the possibility that something less human in nature may be at work here. Ah, oh, Joe. I'm going to see if Balducci's done dusting for fingerprints. Catch you later. More questions? Would you like to see the letter that Lori gave me as a reward for finding her? The one in which Jake Hurley supposedly tells his niece how to find his lost mine? No, thank you. I happily leave it to you to try to solve the mystery of his disappearance. You can afford to look foolish, dear. I can't. Do you have a theory as to who pulled the emergency brake? Well, I know it wasn't me, I assume it wasn't you, and I highly doubt it was Lori. So that leaves those two friends of yours, Mr. Gray and Mr. Balducci. Have you run across many haunted train stories in the course of your research? A few, but most train-bound ghosts that I've come across seem to have better things to do than sit around pulling emergency brakes. Were you able to find the name of Jake's train engineer? I came across three references to the fact that Jake had an engineer, but I'm afraid none of them included his name. I failed. Sorry. Aren't you even going to try finding out what happened to Jake Hurley? No time. 
The only reason I haven't insisted that Lori release me from all this silliness is there's always the possibility that what happened to him has the makings of a bestseller. Although I highly doubt it. Why are you so sure that Jake's story wouldn't make a bestseller? His story is an all-too-common one. A man wanders off into the desert in search of gold and never returns. Why? He either doesn't have enough food or water, or he encounters hostile natives. What about his wife, Camille, dying on the train like that? That does make the story a little more interesting. She probably died of something mundane, like pneumonia or even measles. Now, if it was wintertime when she died, and they were in the mountains, Jake no doubt kept her body on the train for months before he buried her, which is rather delicious in a morbid sort of way. How do you think Jake's engineer wound up dead on the train in the middle of nowhere? My guess is the engineer got tired of waiting for Jake to return, took off in the train to get help, and died of a heart attack along the way, after which the train rolled to a stop in Blue Moon Canyon. Anyone experienced enough to single-handedly run a steam engine would have been quite a bit older than Jake. I should get going. Let me know if you run across anything juicy. Looks like Tino's through dusting for fingerprints. What's up? So are you making any progress in here? Oh yeah, not only am I getting some real unusual EMRs, that's electromagnetic readings, but take a look at this. You've got something? I set up a camera and took some time-lapse photos. Sometimes I was in the room, sometimes I wasn't, but somewhere along the line, I managed to get a shot of Camille. Where? You don't mean that little blob, do you? Yep, that's Camille. Okay. You're skeptical. That's cool. Just remember, the key word when it comes to ghostly phenomena is energy. That blob is the result of Camille's residual life force, spirit if you will reacting with the chemicals in the photographic paper. Couldn't it just be a flaw in the photographic paper? Okay, it could be that too, but it's not. Trust me. Thanks for the chat. Take care. Glad you dropped in. Lori told me she'd given you a letter from Jake Hurley that says how to find his mind. That's right. You can read it if you want. Lori should have given that to me. I mean, I'm the trained professional around here. Let me take a look. I've seen enough. Two words. Use less. Those are just the rantings of a guy who spent way too much of his life swirling mud around in pans under the hot sun. Five-star nut job. Lori says she found this letter in a wastebasket exactly where it belongs. Did you find any fingerprints on the emergency brake handle? None that were any help, thanks to Casey Jones up there. I told the old geezer not to touch anything, but he went and got his big, fat, oily paw prints all over the place. If we didn't need him to drive the train, I'd charge him with obstruction of justice. Did you do anything else besides look for fingerprints? Of course. As a matter of fact, I found this. Probably fell out of the perp's pocket while he was yanking on the handle. Looks like some kind of thermometer. Yeah, like the kind a certain ghost hunter uses on that bogus show of his. You think John Gray threw the break? But why would he do that? Because they're thinking about axing his show, that's why. I checked with this buddy of mine in L.A. Gray's got to come up with something real big real soon, or he's toast. And you can't get much bigger than a train with a spooky past that's prone to strange accidents, now can you? Who else have you told about this? All in due time. I always like to get my ducks in a row before I make an arrest. But couldn't someone else have dropped that thermometer? Please. Who's the top cop here, huh? Who's the world famous detective? You? I know what I'm doing, sweetheart. John Gray wanted publicity. 
That's exactly what I'm gonna give him. Do you think I could take a closer look at that cougar statue? What, that cigar clipper? Uh, go ahead, take a look. I'll bet I need this stone to build that thing in the diagram I found. But if I remove it now, Tina will know I'm onto something. Interesting. I just wanted to get a good look at it, that's all. What else can I do for you? Hope I didn't take up too much of your time. Anything for a fellow detective. Yes? I hear that Tino and you used to be an item. How did you know that? I'm a good detective, remember? We went out a couple of times, yeah. As for why we stopped going out, you'd have to ask him. Do you have any idea who threw the emergency break? I know exactly who did it. How do you know? Well, who else could it be? Camille. None of us has any reason to stop the train, but Camille? She doesn't want us to find Jake's mine, so she's going to do whatever she can to keep its location a secret. Did you see something? Well, no. But I'll tell you what. Your friend, that Jim Harley guy? Not Jim. Joe. Joe Hardy. Yeah, well, he thinks it's Camille, too. He just doesn't have the guts to say so. We'll talk some more later. As soon as you figure it out, let me know. Guess Camille liked to collect dolls. I wonder how you're supposed to get this open.
With any luck, I just open the stove in the dining car. James Thurston. Nancy, you missed it. Missed what? The argument of the century. Joe, he's exaggerating. Aw, oh, come on, you heard him. They were ready to tear each other to shreds. Who? Charlena and Lori. All we heard was the tail end of it, and unfortunately we really couldn't make out what they were saying. So you don't know what they were arguing about? No. But whatever it was, both of them were absolutely out of their minds, livid. And it would probably be a good idea to find out why. Let me look into it. I'll talk to you later, okay? You know where to find us. Back already? I think I know the name of Jake Hurley's engineer. James Thurston. Great! What else do you know about him? Well, nothing. Good. Good? Yeah, finding out more about him will give us something to do. We'll look into it. Tino found one of John Gray's thermometers by the emergency brake handle and is getting ready to throw the book at him. John Gray threw the emergency brake? Why would he do that? Tino thinks he did it to hype the ghost factor and make it sound like he was onto something big so the cable company won't cancel his show. I still say there's less to all this than meets the eye, if you get my drift. I get your drift, Joe. I have lived with your drift for years. I am saddled with your drift. All right, all right. Talk to you later. You better. More questions? What were you and Lori arguing about earlier today? Lori and I? We weren't arguing. We were simply discussing a topic about which both of us are passionate, that's all. Were you discussing her wanting to be a romance novelist? No. And even if we were, that's really none of your business. I know that sounds harsh, but really, Nancy, eavesdropping is so tacky. Actually, it was Frank and Joe Hardy who overheard you. They said I should talk to you before they gave me all the gory details, but since you obviously don't want to tell me your side of the story, I'll just have to get the scoop from them. No, no, you don't have to do that. A storyline that Lori submitted to me found its way into my last book, despite the fact that she never received compensation for it. She's reading the book now, and when she got to that part, she freaked. You stole one of her ideas? She had no business sending me unsolicited material. But, technically, yes. Now legally she can't prove anything, and I'm certainly not about to admit anything. And it's not as if she needs the money. But that's what we were arguing about. For what it's worth, I'm going to talk to this producer I know to see if he'll cast Lori in his next movie. It'll help ease my conscience, and who knows? She could wind up being a star. I mean, she is blonde. I'll let you get back to your writing. All right, then. Hey, glad you stopped in. You gotta listen to this. What have you got? I put this digital recorder in the corner where Camille showed up in that picture and turned it on so it would just keep recording. Now when you play it back at normal volume, all you hear is background noise. But when you turn the volume way up and run the signal through a filter or two, hear that? I hear something. It kind of sounds like a woman singing. Not just any woman. Camille. Camille. So be careful what you say in here. She's listening. Are you by any chance missing a small digital thermometer? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I am. When I went through the box I'd packed them in, that one over there, I came up one short. I was hoping to set up at least six in here so I could check for cold spots. How did you know I was missing one? Because Tino Balducci found it by the emergency brake handle when he was dusting it for fingerprints. And now he thinks you're the one who pulled it. That's ridiculous. I didn't have any reason to pull the emergency brake. 
Is it true that your show is in danger of being canceled? Newsflash, my show was canceled. Happened last night. But what nobody knows yet is that it's been picked up by a major TV network. Not only am I still on the air, but I'm sitting prettier than ever. Any other questions? Were you in this room the whole time prior to that emergency break thing? Of course not. I made a couple of trips to my compartment in the sleeping car to get more equipment. But did I get an overpowering urge to pull the emergency brake while I was there? No. Thanks for the chat. Come back anytime. What's going on? How come you told me you and Lori never went out, and she told me you did? Don't you ever stop asking questions? When people start answering them honestly, I do. <sighs> My dumpter, okay? I'm not proud of what I did, I'm not happy about what I did, but it's done. It's over. Now let's drop it. If you didn't want to dump her, why did you? You are incredibly irritating, you know that? I dumped her because... because people said going out with her would make me look bad. Said she was a joke, that no one took her seriously. Said if I started hanging with her, no one would take me seriously. So I stopped calling. But you didn't stop caring. No. Now take a powder, I don't feel like talking anymore. Yes? Guess I'd better get to work. I'll be waiting. Ah, I can't stay mad at a fellow detective. What do you need? You've been a big help. Not a problem. Hey, how's it going? Were you able to find anything out about Jake's engineer, that James Thurston guy? Good news and bad news. The good news is he had a wife in Copper Gorge, so he may have had children. The bad news is our internet service provider stopped providing before we could use our cell phones to find out anything else. That's okay. We can do more checking when we get to Copper Gorge. Right. house come on over here welcome stranger listen you by any chance get here on that private train what's parked out yonder as a matter of fact yes i did there's a rumor going around that charlena purcell's on board is that true as a matter of fact yes it is hot dang if that don't beat all i've read every single book that gal's ever written best writer would ever lived did she get off the train too i don't think so she's pretty busy Charlena Purcell herself right here in Copper Gorge, breathing the same air as me. Hot dang! Well, welcome, little missy. Go on in and take a gander at what life was like during the heyday of Copper Gorge whilst you sample some of our delicious homemade saltwater taffy. So, this is some kind of museum? Why, it's the best kind of museum, sister. It's free. You can gape and gawk and ooh and ah to your heart's content. Least you can till I close up. Where'd all this stuff come from? Been in the family for years. For centuries, in fact. See, Buell was my great-great-uncle. This building used to be his general store. During the glory days back in the 1880s, he commenced a pawnbrokering, 
so the miners Copper Gorge was crawling with back then could raise some cash to pay for grub and tools and such. But pretty soon, the mining boom went bust. And there was Uncle Butte, stuck with a whole store full of junk. Only it wasn't junk to him. Debris from lost lives and broken dreams, what he called it. Couldn't bring himself to get rid of it. So, he passed it on to his kin. My great granddaddy's the one who come up with the idea of turning the place into a tourist attraction. And you make money by selling taffy? Tourists just love taffy. Especially when you dangle a free sample in front of them to get them hooked. Of course, it ain't really free. Some taffy on a stick will cost you two tokens. Which you can get by winning both those games over there. How much does it cost to play them? Well, ain't you the little penny pincher. Fact of the matter is, they're free. Unless you go messing with the artifacts I got in here. Do that and you'll be headfirst in the nearest snowdrift before you know what hit you. Do you by any chance have any of Jake Hurley's things in here? Jake who? Hurley. He was a miner. I think he may have left a lamp and a pickaxe with your great-great-uncle. Never heard of him. Of course, that don't mean his stuff's not here. Just means you're just gonna have to look around and see for yourself. But remember, Susie Q, don't touch. Pleasure talking to you. I'll bet it was. This looks just like the insignia I saw on the train. I'll bet this was Jake's trunk. Fooey. And I lose. Fooey. <laughs> I lose. Yahoo! Yahoo! <laughs> <laughs> 
like to get some taffy on a stick, I'm going to need two different tokens. You still here? Do you know what's in that old trunk over there? Why? You ain't been fooling with it, have you? Oh no, of course not. No, I just thought it might contain the lamp and pickaxe that I asked you about before. Well, if it does, you can forget about them, cause it's locked. None of my kin have ever been able to figure out how to open it. Not even my cousin Alvin, and he went to junior college. Would it be okay if I tried to open it? Well, now, I certainly ain't gonna let you break it open if that's what you're getting at. Oh, no, I would never use force, believe me. But in order to try to get it open, I would have to, you know, touch it. Nope, sorry, not gonna happen, little missy. Unless. Unless? Tell you what, you get Charlene and Purcell to come in here so as I can shake her hand, and I'll let you fiddle with that trunk till the cows come home. But Charlena is very busy. What if she won't come? Then I guess you'll just be out of luck. No, actually, you will be. Now, how do you figure that? Well, if you were to just meet her, you'd have nothing to show for it. Afterwards, she'd go her way and you go yours, and that would be it. But if you were to, say, get her autograph, well, then you'd have something to hang on the wall and brag about. Okay. Make it so as I can meet her. And get her autograph. Oh, but the thing is, she's on a deadline, and if you take her away from her writing, she may fall behind. And if she falls behind, her publisher may pull the plug. And if her publisher pulls the plug, it could ruin her career. Do you really want to risk ruining Charlena Purcell's career? Good heavens, of course not. All right, you just get me Charlena's autograph, and you got a deal. Just make sure she uses my name. I want it real personal like. You bet. And your name is... Fatima. With an F. None of that weirdo PH stuff. Okay, Fatima. I'll be right back. Yes? <gasps> you startled me. Do you work here? I do. Are you looking for someone? Uh, yes. Camille Hurley. She died back in the 1800s. Ah, Camille. Beautiful crypt. Wonderful view, good drainage. Whoever buried her must have loved her very much. May I go inside it? You may, but unfortunately you can't. Why not? I accidentally dropped the key down the grate that's in front of the crypt. If you can retrieve it, you can keep it. I'm having another one made. But if you do go into the crypt, just remember, you won't be alone. Well, there's the key. I need something long and sticky. Gotcha! This indentation looks familiar. In the letter he wrote to his niece, Jake said she should go to Camille's grave and let Camille's goodness rub off on her. Rub as in rubbing, maybe? I need something that'll help me make sense out of all those lines.
More questions? I met a huge fan of yours in town who'd really, really like your autograph. An autograph picture would be even better. Imagine that. Me having fans way out here in the boonies. Well, I'm sure I have a picture around here somewhere. But what I don't have is a pen. Usually I just ask my assistant for one. I have a pencil here somewhere. A pencil won't do, dear. It has to be ink. See if you can borrow a pen from somebody. What's going on? Do you by any chance have a pen I could borrow? Why, I'm surprised at you. Don't you know that every detective should carry a pen? Actually, I carry a pencil. Well, as it happens, I got lots of pens. I'll tell you what, if you can play that Leapin' Lizards game I found over there and do better than I did when I played it, which shouldn't be that hard seeing as how smart you are, I'll give you a pen. What do you say? Sounds good to me. Okay, the object of the game is to get rid of as many lizards as you can by jumping them with other lizards until you can't jump anymore. Last time I played, I wound up with just five lizards. If you can wind up with only four, the pen's yours. I did it! I won! Talk about luck. Here's your pen. What else can I do for you? Thanks for your help. Not a problem. Have you found a pen so I can autograph that picture? I got it from Tino. You can keep it. If you could have it say, To Fatima, that'd be great. There you go. Anything else? I'll let you get back to your writing. All right, then. Hey, Nancy. There you are. We've been looking for you. Yeah, you won't believe the lucky break we caught. Lucky break? Hey, that was the result of good old-fashioned detective work. It was the result of your insisting we stop for a cheeseburger. Guys, what's going on? Well, it turns out that a grandchild of Jake's engineer still lives around here. What's more, he hangs out at the local diner, comes in every day. Apparently, he's pretty ancient. Ah, and you found that out when you stopped there so Joe could get a hamburger. Cheeseburger. The thing is, the owner of the diner wouldn't agree to point the guy out unless one of us fills in for a short order cook. He's got to go home and wait for the cable guy or something. And since Joe here barely knows how to boil water, guess who got the job? Way to go, Frank! Oh, and get this. Balducci convinced Lori that Jake's mine is somewhere right here in Copper Gorge, so he, Lori, and John Gray are hiking up the mountain out there even as we speak. Like that bumblebrain's gonna find anything. 
Sounds like now might be a good time to do some serious poking around on the train. Good thought. Hey, I better get going. Wish me luck. I'll go with you. You can make me a cheeseburger. Got that autograph? Got something better. An autographed picture. Hot dang! She spelled my name right and everything. Go ahead, little missy. Have a go with that trunk. Whatever's inside it's all yours. What fits here? What fits here? There we go.
P-B C-U What fits here? Well, here's Jake's lamp. Another slug could come in handy. But where's his pickaxe? Welcome back! Have you by any chance ever come across a pickaxe that had the initials J.H. carved into it? Why? Because it used to belong to Jake Hurley, and I really, really need it. I thought it would be in that old trunk, but it wasn't. You got that trunk open? <laughs> Wait till I tell Cousin Alvin. He thinks he's so smart. As for that pickaxe, so happens I got it upstairs in my kitchen. Use it to open the coconuts Aunt Lucy sends me every year from Hawaii. Do you think I could have it? Why, no, you can't have it. How would I open them coconuts? But your great-great-uncle, do you really think Buell would approve of you using something that belonged to some poor miner to open coconuts? Oh, okay. I'll let you have the pickaxe. After you do something for me. Sure. I got a bunch of taffy over there what needs sorting. Just follow the directions that are posted by the machine. Them belts get moving pretty fast, so you gotta keep your wits about you. While you're doing that, I'll fetch that pickaxe. You got a deal. Wax paper for the taffy. Would you mind if I took a piece of wax paper? Guess I could let you have a piece. Did it! Got that taffy sorted? No problem. That was easy. You sneak any freebies while you were at it? Oh no, I would never do that. <laughs> well, ain't you the goody two-shoes? Truth is, wouldn't have minded too much if you had. Long as you fessed up to it. Here's the pickaxe. Cracked the handle pretty bad on the last batch of coconuts. You sure you want it? Positive. There you go. Don't hurt yourself. I won't. Thank you. Hello? Hey, it's Frank. I'm in the kitchen of the diner playing short order cook. Has that grandchild of Jake's engineer showed up yet? Just came in with this lady who's even older than he is. And get this, he's a retired miner, so every time I finish an order and ring the pickup bell, he thinks it's the mine shaft elevator bell. And for some reason it makes him start telling his lady friend about his grandfather. You mean you ring the bell and he starts talking about James Thurston? 
Exactly. Of course, five seconds later, he's rambling on about something totally unrelated, but I just fill an order, ring the bell, and ding, he picks up right where he left off. That is, unless I fill the order wrong and the waitress chews me out. She's got a voice like a chainsaw. Very distracting. Sounds like you better keep your ears open and your nose to the grindstone. I am. Just wanted to keep you posted. Well, good luck. Thanks. Talk to you soon. So do you know what you want to order yet, Edna? I'm still looking. Did I tell you that my granddaddy was the engineer on a private train owned by one of the richest men that ever passed through Copper Gorge? Jake Hurley was his name. Yes, sir, my granddaddy was Jake's private engineer for more than 25 years. Told my daddy that men don't come any crazier than Jake Hurley, or any nicer. Treated my granddaddy real well and told him stuff. Real important stuff. Stuff he made my granddaddy swear to never ever forget. Stuff that my granddaddy told my daddy, and that my daddy told me. Why don't you get the egg salad, Edna? Eggs are back to being good for you, you know. Seems like just last year all those scientific types were saying your arteries would clog up if you so much as looked at an egg. But nowadays, why well, all of a sudden eggs are chock full of vitamins and proteins and eating them's not only okay, it's what they recommend. They should either make up their mind. Yes, sir, Jake Hurley told my granddaddy things he never told another living soul. Not even his wife. I tell you about her, Edna. I don't think so. Camille was her name. Camille Boulet. That's French, you know. Of course, she died so young that poor Jake didn't have time to tell her anything. According to my granddaddy, one summer day she had a dizzy spell and fell and hit her head. She didn't take well to the heat, see, and sometimes in the summer, when they were going through the desert, why, that train would be just like an oven. Anyway, Granddad said she got right up afterwards and seemed okay, but a couple hours later, Jake found her in her room, dead as a doornail. Now there's another expression that kind of makes you wonder. Dead as a doornail? How can something be dead if it was never alive to begin with? And what? The way my Granddaddy died, that was kind of strange, too. I ever tell you how my Granddaddy died? No, I don't think you did. My daddy, he came home from school one day to find a railroad official telling his mom that Granddad been found dead in Blue Moon Canyon, Nevada. He was in the engine of Jake Hurley's train, just kind of slumped over with his hand still on the throttle. The strange thing is, nobody else was on board the train, yet the door to the engine was locked and barred. It was like Granddad was trying to keep someone out, like he was running from something. Like something finally scared him so bad, his heart just stopped. Of course, he was in his 60s at the time, and back then, that was old. <laughs> Doesn't seem so old now, does it, Edna? Here I am, pushing 93, and still spry as a spring chicken. Spring chicken! Now, where do you suppose that expression came from? Why not spring goose or summer chicken? Ah, life's just one puzzlement after another, isn't it, Edna? Hey, look, Mr. Temporary Cook Person. If I serve this, my customer would throw a fit. Just make me what's on that check, okay? That cook had better get on the stick or we're all gonna go deaf out here.
I ever tell you about the mine my granddaddy said Jake heard he'd found? He found a mine? A couple years before he died, granddad told my daddy that Jake found a vein in the mountains somewhere and was mining it all by himself so no one would steal it out from under him. He wouldn't even tell granddad where the mine was. What he'd do is have granddad drive the train real slow so he could jump off without granddad seeing him. Then granddad would pick him up at a prearranged spot a few days later. Oh, they didn't call him Crazy Jake Hurley for nothing. Speaking of crazy, you see how much Abner's charging for a haircut at that shop of his now? Twenty bucks! But the craziest thing Jake Hurley ever did was tell granddad the secret to finding his mind. He made him swear to tell it to my daddy and nobody else. Eventually, my daddy, he told me, and it was so bizarre that I remember it to this day. Though I sure don't understand how it had helped anybody find his mind. But since my daddy didn't tell me not to tell anybody, this is what crazy Jake Hurley told Granddad, word for word. The eye of the tiger is fixed on a star. Zircon lies in fingers that scar. Amethyst floats in a hand from the deep. Citrine is what the foul mouth shall keep. Tourmaline by a soft arm is ensnared. Peridot rests at the foot of the mare. The eye of the tiger is fixed on a star. Zircon lies in fingers that scar. Amethyst floats in a hand from the deep. Citrine is what the foul mouth shall keep. Tourmaline by a soft arm is ensnared. Peridot rests at the foot of the mare. Frank, are you sure that's what he said? I'm positive. Are you sure that's all he said? Look, this guy was old, okay? I mean, we're talking Jurassic. And guys that old don't joke around. They don't have time to. What you just heard is what I heard, word for word. Got anything else? I almost forgot. You gotta check this out. It's just an old letter, Frank. You bet it's an old letter. From Samuel Clemens. Oh my gosh, where'd you get this? I found it in the caboose. Apparently, he and Jake were pen pals. Wish I had a famous writer for a pen pal. When Joe gave it to me, I about flipped. I know I should turn it over to Lori, and I will, but it's just so darn cool. I still don't see what the big deal is. I mean, it's not like it's from Mark Twain or anything. What? See you later. You better. What's up? I hear Tino took you and Lori for a little hike today. Don't remind me. Turns out Tino had no idea where he was going. Good thing for him my fingers were frozen stiff. Otherwise, I would have strangled him. I won't keep you any longer. Take care. I moved my microphones, so if you want to play the piano, knock yourself out. Thank you. A spyglass. I'll bet it's the one I need for Jake's projector. Better not mess with that puppy.
Wisdom, charity, purity, eternity. More pipes. Why am I not surprised? That should do it. I wonder if that eagle has something to do with the eagle in that painting in the dining car. And naturally, we have still more pipes. There, that looks right. Sounds like steam from the engine is moving through those pipes now. Pair of duct tape. What's going on? So, how did your expedition to Jake's mine turn out? Well, as you may or may not have heard, I didn't find the mine. But at least now I know where it isn't, which is just as good as knowing where it is. Sort of. Do you by any chance have any duct tape? Duct tape? Sure don't. But there was this one case at work where duct tape came in real handy. See, I had just collared this. I'm kind of in a hurry, Mr. Balducci. Oh. Maybe some other time. What's up? Would you by any chance have any duct tape? Got some right there in my gearbox. That's the good news. The bad news is... I can't open the box. It's an antique lockbox that I found in this abandoned monastery I scoped out on my show last year. You can open it with either the key, which I just discovered I forgot to bring with me, or the combination, which you're supposed to be able to figure out just by looking at the box. Fortunately, I didn't put anything critical in there. I've never tried to open it without the key, but if you want that duct tape, 
Go ahead and give it a shot. Thanks. I think I will. If you get it open, the duct tape's all yours. I bet the animals should start from the left shore. Before you say anything, I just want to say thank you. For what? Tino came to see me. He said you'd made him realize what a jerk he'd been for dumping me, and then he asked me out. Isn't that great? He said he doesn't care what anybody else thinks. He thinks we make the perfect couple. Well, I can't argue with him there. So what do you want? I hear Tino took you and John on a trek to Jake's mine. Jake's mind my eye. We went tramping through the snow, lugging all this equipment John insisted on bringing, and where do we end up? At this teeny tiny, half-rotten, tumbled-down outhouse. He led you to an outhouse? Well, he said it was the opening to a mine shaft, but then John said if it was, shouldn't the hole be going into the mountain instead of just down? So they stood there arguing until Tino finally grabbed a shovel, went inside, and started digging. What he found was definitely not gold. Did he apologize? Of course not. If he didn't have such nice eyes, the man would be a total zero. I'll come back later. As soon as you figure it out, let me know. There, good as new. Oh, sorta. Okay, looks like that goes there. This goes here. There, it should work now. Whoa, looks like I did something right. And we have liftoff.
where Jake's mine is? Brimstone Canyon. Don't you look all excited. What's up? I think I know where Jake's mine is. Tell the engineer to head for a place in Nevada called Brimstone Canyon. Way to go! I knew you could do it, Francie! Not Francie, Nancy. Here's the deal. When we get there, I'm going to make sure that you get to be the first one to check out the mine. I'll call everyone together in the dining car, and while we're in there, you slip off the train. Will ten minutes be enough of a head start? That'd be great. Think of it as your reward. Of course, anything you find in the mine is, well, mine. So if I find out that you've taken something without telling me, let's just say things could get ugly. I wouldn't get your hopes up too high. The mine might be totally worthless, you know. I know, but I have the feeling that thanks to you, we are about to discover something huge. Great job, Amy. Ah, uh, thank you. like the train's leaving. Where's it going? Well, Frank and Joe will make sure it comes back for me. I hope. This is the entrance to Jake's mine. Whoa, what's going on here? Jake's color wheel seems to be pointing toward purple. Wow, glowing lizards. Cool, but weird. Uh-oh, there's some kind of chamber on the other side of those poles. But if I move the wrong one, the ceiling will collapse. Jake was too meticulous not to have left a clue somewhere as to how you're supposed to move them. Okay, so far so good. I should be able to get through there now. Jake Hurley, I presume? Camille. It figures he'd be carrying a picture of her. Hmm, there's something underneath it. Looks like a letter. April 14th, 1865. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Your humble friend, Abe. Oh my gosh, this is from Abraham Lincoln. And April 14th is the day he was assassinated. This letter must be worth a fortune. That's just what I thought too. See, what I didn't tell you when I gave you that letter Jake wrote to Ruth is that I also found his diary, which is how I found out he'd gotten to be friends with President Lincoln, and that he'd gotten a letter from Abe that he knew would be so valuable someday that he always kept it on his person. Can I have it? Sure. 
See, I knew if we could just find Jake's body, we'd find the letter. And you did it, Amy. You did it. I'm going to be famous. Good famous for once. So you never really cared about finding Jake's mine? Nah. I mean, it would have been nice if it was filled with gold and silver and stuff. But this is what I was really after. And you followed me because you didn't trust me? I trusted you to find it. I just didn't trust you to give it to me. And now that you have... You know, I'd really, really be famous if I could say I found this all by myself. But even if I got you to lie for me, how do I know you'd keep lying? Oh my gosh! What if there was like this cave-in and we were trapped, but I was the only one who made it out? Uh, excuse me? Oh my gosh! That way I could not only say that I found the letter, but that I tried to save you. Only you did something stupid, and it was all I could do to save myself. Oh my gosh! I'd make the national news for sure, and people would say I was smart and resourceful and courageous even. Lori, you can't be serious. That's crazy. You don't understand. People are finally going to respect me. I have to do this. Sorry. Lori! The opening's blocked. I'm trapped. Now how am I going to get out of here? Maybe I could get out of here in this. Are you all right? Nancy! Is everything okay? It is now. As soon as we discovered you and Lori weren't on the train, we jumped off and hightailed it back here. What the heck's going on? I'm sure Lori will be glad to tell you all about it. Darn you, Natalie! It's Nancy. Dear Hannah, some hostess Lori Gerard turned out to be. When her father heard that she'd tried to seal me up in that mine, he canceled all her credit cards and said that from now on, Lori will have to support herself. She has yet to stop crying. Tino Balducci told reporters that he knew what Lori was up to all along and said he let Frank, Joe, and me solve the case so we amateurs could enjoy his limelight. Joe was just about to belt him when a big argument broke out between John Gray and Charlena over whether John had really recorded Camille's ghost. She started calling him a crackpot, and then he started calling her a hack. Then, well, let's just say that soon the press was no longer interested in what Tino had to say. As for Jake Hurley, it turns out that his letter from Abe Lincoln is worth a small fortune. Pretty ironic, huh? Jake spent his whole life searching for gold, when all along he possessed something far more valuable his uncanny knack for making friends. Love, Nancy. Have you ever been to Paris, France? Well, preparez-vous, because that's where my next mystery adventure takes place. 
I'm going to be the assistant to Minette, a famous fashion designer. I'll be working undercover to find out why she's been acting so peculiar lately, throwing tantrums, firing people. She's even started wearing a mask for no apparent reason. Her studio is in this spooky-looking centuries-old moulin. That's French for windmill. Of course, that doesn't have anything to do with her strange behavior. Or does it? One way to find out. Help me solve my next case. Danger by design. À la prochaine!